invite you to join me in an opening prayer. Good and gracious God, we come today to praise and worship you, to be amongst our community and to receive your word and your gifts of forgiveness. We thank you for this meal that we will participate in and that you are the bread of life that we believe in. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us begin our morning worship with blessed assurance. It's number 638. I invite you to please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin 
and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit. May Christ, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us with this world, in this world, in all its needs, with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Oh, <laughs> 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill us, kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. ate the bread of angels, God provided for them food enough. Raining down flesh upon them like dust, and flying birds like the sand of the seas. Letting them fall in the midst of the camp and around about the dwellings. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. A reading from the book of Ephesians. 
I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and, humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended from above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that, were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us can come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full statue of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful shaming, scheming. But speaking in the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is, it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe it? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I invite the kids to come forward. You guys sleepy this morning? Yeah, sleepy. It's kind of hot. It's going to get hot today again. <laughs> well, have you guys ever had a Coca Cola? You ever drink Coca Cola? Yeah? Pretty famous. It's like a hundred and some years old, the company making Coca Cola soft drink. They used to have an a, um, a ad campaign. And it was something like, um, Coca-Cola, it's the real thing. Um, that it was, you know, the best of the best. Of all the soft drinks, this is the real one. This is the one you need to drink. That was their campaign. And 
Today in our gospel lesson, Jesus says that he has the seal of approval from God the Father, creator. I'm not quite sure what that means. What I do know is we've got a couple other stories. We've got one where Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist, and when he comes out of the water, you know, there's like this kind of moment, like water, light and skies open and, and a voice says, this is my son, and I am truly pleased with him, and he is blessed. And then there's another story where Jesus and his disciples are up on this hill, big, huge mountaintop, hilltop, and um, two prophets from old come and tell, and again, there's this, you know, light and opening of the skies and this voice that says, this is my son, I am well pleased with him. So maybe that's what it was, was that, you know, he had God's seal of approval. Um, maybe it's from those stories. All we do know is that um, Jesus was the real thing, you know, and as followers of his, um, we are, we can trust that when we have needs that God will provide for them and that we are following the real thing, the real God and um, a good one. So let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus giving us the connection to you, our creator, that Jesus was both God and human, that we could have this connector and the real thing with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up. So for about six weeks, we are in the sixth chapter of John. So I think we're in week two. I think we got about four or five more to go, all in this one chapter. So every week, it's just going to be sixth chapter of John for the gospel lesson for a while. And then we'll pop back to Mark where we left off, which was the sixth chapter of Mark. So after that, we'll back to Mark 7. And we won't see John again until... About Thanksgiving time. So uh, right now we're, we're kind of in this Gospel of John place where we start with the story of the feeding of the thousands with a starter meal of loaves and fishes. That was last week. And then Jesus walks on water to sneak away from the crowd that wants to crown him king by joining his disciples who had gone ahead in a boat as a kind of decoy. And now we begin this series of seven statements, the I am statements. They are a reminder of the personal name of God that God refers to in Exodus 3, 14 at Moses in the burning bush. Common feature of these I am sayings in John is that they express Jesus' relationship with humanity. There is anything to get out of John, it's that it emphasizes the strongest and the most that Jesus was human and divine, that that came together in Jesus. The six following I am the bread of life of these sayings is I am the light of the world in chapter eight, the gate for the sheep and the good shepherd found in chapter 10, I am the resurrection and the life in chapter 11. I am the way, the truth, and the life, chapter 14. I am the true vine, chapter 15. In all of these things, Jesus is telling his disciples, if you want to know who I am, what I'm about, here's your answer. I am about life. All these things are about life. Today's from John 6:35 is I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Now as I said just prior to this reading 
is the miraculous feeding of the multitude. And this becomes a symbol of Jesus' provision of life for his followers. This provision of life is a central theme for Jesus, especially in his saying, I am the bread of life. And while 635 is a good place to start, what it actually is is a continuation from a conversation that starts in verse 25. So you almost have to go back to get the context. It starts with a group who were seeking out Jesus based on his performance the prior day, the feeding miracle. The people are fed, they're provided for, they have enough, and now it's the day after and guess what? Just like on Thanksgiving when we're stuffed to the gills and yet somehow that next day you wake up and you're hungry, right? So the people were fed to fullness, but now they're hungry again. So they come to Jesus asking for more. And what do they want? More bread. Consider that word bread. It has plenty of different meanings. Bread can obviously be the food that you make an awesome sandwich with, right? Bread. It can also be slang for money. You might be the breadwinner providing for your family. You might be generous casting your bread upon the water. Uh, you might be aware of something to your advantage. You know which side your bread is buttered on. Common themes running through all of these bread sayings, and there's a multitude more, is that bread is the sustainer of life. In Exodus 3.13, Moses asked God what name he should give when Israel asked who sent him. And God says to Moses, I am who I am, that that is God's name. Say to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God called himself Yahweh, meaning I am. Meaning, God has always existed. No one caused God to exist. And God continues exist to exist eternally through God's own self-power. So that's all in that two-word name, I am or Yahweh. So Jesus takes this holy name, I am, the personal name of God, and attaches to it bread. Bread, which has all of these sustaining of life meanings. He's declaring that bread comes from and will be sustained by God. That God provides the bread that sustains life. This is basically a Sunday school lesson of what the story of Exodus 13 means. Exodus 13 tells of the grumbling Israelites who are being shaped into freed slaves, from freed slaves into the people of God. So they're being shaped into a new identity. So this is a culturally identifying story. It's like our national stories that we tell on, say, the 4th of July, our Revolutionary War stories. These are the ones that shape America's identity, the ones we pass on generation to generation. That's what Exodus 16 is for the Hebrew people and for most of the people who would have been gathering on that in Capernaum around Jesus begging for more food. They would have known these references immediately. We're not quite as familiar, so we need a little background. Exodus 16, it tells the story, okay, this grumbling Israelites, and they're complaining to Moses and his brother Aaron that they're starving in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died at the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of what? Bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Pretty dramatic. In response, God rains bread from heaven on them. 
with the instructions to only gather enough for each day. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they turned and looked towards the wilderness. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them in a cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, and then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So as I said, it's a culturally identifying story with two lessons. One, God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. So now we have another name for God. And the second lesson is that we should honor Sabbath rest because it identifies followers of God. And how Sabbath rest identifies followers of God is because only those who would trust God as our provider would do such a thing as Sabbath rest. The wilderness in our story of Exodus 16, in our story of John 6, because they're kind of out in the wilderness in that story as well. And the wilderness, just as a saying for those times when unknowns prevail, it's an exciting time. It's a time uh, with lessons of trust. In the wilderness of Exodus 16, we find that no sooner had the people left Egypt, they're being hunted down by the Egyptians, and lo and behold, God provides them safe passage, and the people celebrate. And then three days later, the people are thirsty, and all they can find is bitter water, and God provides them with fresh water, and the people are happy, and they celebrate. And then, a couple days later, they're starving in the wilderness, and they're grumbling. So you get that even though we have this knowledge, we even have examples and miracles. We still can be grumbling that we're hungry today when we were fed yesterday. God hears their grumbling and responds by providing exactly what they need. Always enough for everyone. This response of God's faithfulness comes in the form of a bread called menhu. It's Hebrew, it means what is it? So when we say manna from heaven, we mean what is it from heaven? We don't know. We don't really know. The Israelites gathered enough of this stuff for the day. If they tried to hoard it or they tried to gather extra, it would spoil. The only exception to the rule was on the sixth day when they were told to gather two days' worth so that on the Sabbath, the seventh day, they could rest. God was teaching them to depend on God one day at a time. Can you imagine the first week when they did that? Every other day they gathered too much and it spoiled. Now they're supposed to take this risk. On the seventh day, if God doesn't come through, they'll have spoiled food. Or will they have enough food? See how Sabbath is a sign of trusting God will provide. So they take their Sabbath rest, and it becomes the ultimate identifier as followers of God, because it means that we trust God enough for God to provide enough even when we rest. And that brings us to our gospel lesson, John 6. Because what Jesus is doing there is he's expanding this known cultural identifying story. Jesus says to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is what that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. If peace and rest are what we're hungering for in our personal wildernesses, then Jesus is offering the opportunity to find what we're looking for. 
crowd gathering around him don't see it that way. They're focused on the memory of having their needs met the way they wanted them met the day before when Jesus fed the thousands. They're focused literally on daily bread. Their goals, their dreams are too limited. They are full, and they want a guarantee. They want proof. They want an insurance policy that if they follow Jesus, they're going to be fed every day, that all their needs will be taken care of, that they won't have to face the wilderness again. But that's not what Jesus is promising. Jesus is asking them to release what they know and actually face the wilderness, actually to go into a place of faith where God sustains our lives for life. And it's frightening to face the wilderness, the places of the unknowns. And Jesus is no stranger to that fear. It's not like we're pushed into it. It's more like hand in hand together. For Jesus went to the cross for us, transformed the life of the wilderness into an everlasting life of provision. So bread, it indeed does nourish us and sustain us. Uh, but the other side of bread is that it only does that if we eat it. You can starve while holding a loaf of bread in your hand. How do we come to Jesus? Do we come seeking physical bread, hoping that if you give him enough of your time or your money or praise him loud enough that you might obligate Jesus to pay your bills, fix your marriage, heal your body, perform some other need of your personal agenda. This tends to be kind of the setup for prosperity uh, thinking. The idea that if you somehow think prosperity enough, you're going to get prosperity from Jesus. How do you come joyfully to receive the faith, the bread of life that you don't have control over what that's going to look like? Receive the life that he truly came to give, to surrender to God's supreme care. The response of Jesus to the crowd revealed that the answer to spiritual hunger is not to work more or do more or somehow check off a checkoff list, but rather to put their faith in Christ, that Jesus is the bread of life, a sustainer. Truth is, we're probably more comfortable with a list of good things to do than we are with just trusting God will provide. It's much harder work than meeting a list of expectations. Trusting God will provide in an hour of deepest need marks us as followers, also challenges us as followers to actually build a relationship with Jesus. But this is not an exchange of goods in our connection with God. Most of the time when we are not looking, when we are looking for Jesus, we're not looking for Jesus as a relationship, we're looking at Jesus for what can you do for me? Can you heal me? Can you provide for me? Can you answer this prayer? But I don't really want to get to know you too well, because that would be scary, because you would challenge me in ways maybe I don't want to be challenged. You might ask me to connect with someone I'm scared to connect with. You might ask me to take a leap of faith and try something, follow a passion to my heart when I'm scared to follow that passion because I don't know where it'll lead. That's the riskiness that comes with embracing the bread of life. But the, hold on to the truth of that, which is it is the bread of life, the promise, ultimate vision, vision, mission, 
promise of Jesus Christ is sustenance of life. Bread of life will come because of who Jesus is and who you are in relationship with Jesus. Amen.
Almighty and loving God, we look to you in hope and trust, knowing that you will do far more than we can ask or imagine. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take this time to share a sign of peace with one another. turn it back off. Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you.
is indeed right our duty and our joy, that we should in all play times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his love for us on the way at the table and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And we pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, and throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial, deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. We will invite you to kneel or stand along the railings. You'll receive the bread and then either dark liquid, which is wine, or light liquid, which is grape juice. And there are gluten-free elements available. Just let your server know and those will be served. Come let us eat.
invite you to stand and receive the blessing, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace, for you are Lord forevermore. Just call attention to the messenger for some upcoming needs and announcements. Next Sunday will be a very busy Sunday. Um, we'll have a youth-led Sunday service, backpack blessing, and there is an anniversary coffee for Marge and Dick Peterson. So lots going on next week as we... Um, summer coming to an end and school is starting and all of the excitement of fall so I think we have some more announcements so I'm letting them hello uh, my name is Luke Umland I'm the AV tech here at Messiah I just wanted to let everybody know, speaking of school starting, we are losing a couple of our volunteers, I guess something about college and they can't do both or something crazy like that. Um, so if you guys know of anybody who can help out back there, it won't be every week. Uh, we really want to do a rotation, take some stress off of Drew, who, love you Drew, but every week, please help me. Um, <laughs> So if you guys know anybody, any youth, uh, feel free to come talk to me after. Thank you. I mentioned, my name's Dave Seward. I mentioned this uh, a couple of weeks ago. There is something scheduled the first Saturday after Labor Day. That would be God's Work Our Hands. Mark this on your calendar. That's our traditional neighborhood cleanup. So block everything else off because we're going to need some help, you know, with pickup trucks and stuff like that. We'll have some dumpsters out here uh, to do some stuff. And I think we're going to have some recycling stuff going on also. So the first Saturday after Labor Day, God's work, our hands. Put it on your calendar. Show up. It'll probably be, what, 8 to noon somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, I will not be here. I will be in Spain. So, <laughs> okay, thank you. I invite you to stand and receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome